everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today I'll be doing a review for the film The Green Knight, which just came out this weekend. It is an indie film with a very limited release. It's got about a 20-day theatrical window before they will be pulling it out. And let's just say I have a lot of thoughts on this film, and this is a movie that I saw over the weekend and could have done a review on it earlier, and I actually even did an initial review for all of my Locals members and also anyone else who, as a supporter at the Keeper of the Bifrost, level and I was just very mixed with this movie there's just so much stuff going on in this movie that I needed some time for it to percol percolate in the mind for me to be able to kind of like get my thoughts together on it and before going into those thoughts please make sure you smash that like button light up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey and also make sure that you're subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on that way you know every time a new video or live stream it goes live on the channel so The Green Knight is a new film by David Lowry, who is kind of known for doing these smaller independent type movies. This is a retelling of the classic tale of Sir Gawain and The Green Knight, which it's interesting because after I saw this movie, I became so incredibly interested in the story of Sir Gawain to the point where I realized very quickly that there's actually a huge debate going on right now and has been going on for many, many years about how to actually pronounce that knight's name. There are people who say Gawain, who say Gawain, uh, it almost sounded in the movie like they were saying Garwin in certain ways. It was kind of a weird pronunciation, but uh, needless to say, it's something that is actually currently being debated right now about what the correct way to pronounce the name actually is. But this is actually based off of a poem that was written you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And it's actually been translated several times, including by the great uh, Tolkien actually did a translation and actually was able to pick up the audiobook version of his translation and have been listening to it a little bit as well. It's very interesting to say the very least. But this is a retelling. It's a modern retelling of this classic tale, which kind of sounds like it might be scary, like, oh, no, let's not do any modern retellings. Luckily, though, when it's says modern, it just means that we're still staying in the same medieval time period, so it's not like he's trying to take the story and then tell it in modern times, but rather it's taking the story and then trying to, you know, kind of figure out exactly what is the, the main motive of the mo like of the story, what is the main purpose of the story, and that does allow him to, uh, the, the director and the writer, to be able to actually kind of, you know, take some liberties here and there, but I can say that if you are going into this film expecting or wanting to see a faithful adaptation of the original poem and of the original story, I think that for the most part, you're going to be pretty happy because it really doesn't take too many liberties. And the liberties that it does take really, I think, work well within the framework of the story and I think really kind of add to uh, the story and the appreciation of the story. There are some, I think, uh, some pretty major changes as far as towards the end of the story is concerned because in the poem, in, in the classic tale, uh, it ends in a very specific way. Way. And this one kind of leaves a more open-ended, almost darker ending. But honestly, I think that the way that it was presented was actually pretty, pretty darn cool. And also, it's it adds kind of that creepiness factor, and it adds to the dramatic element of of the story. And I, I, I and for the most part, I actually really liked the the elements that were added in to this story. And in this case, since I had not had any attachment to any original source material, uh, as again, no, no, knowing anything really about Sir Gawain and the Green Knight was kind of very limited on my part. I, I don't have as much attachment to the story, and I don't have as much attachment to uh, wanting a film that's going to be a hundred percent faithful and not take any liberties, not take any leeway whatsoever. But I think that for the most part, you're going to be pretty happy with the way that the film is presenting this here. Dev Patel plays Sir Gawain. I thought that Dev Patel did a great job in this movie. He is a fantastic actor. You have a bunch of other people in this film, like Sean Harris, who plays King Arthur, which I thought was really cool. It's also really nice to see that this movie is about Sir Gawain. This is not about trying to cash in on the name of, of King Arthur, though he is in the movie. And he does play a role in there. You also have Queen Guinevere in the film, too. And so I like how they were able to bring in these other names that I'm a little bit more aware of and I know a little bit more about, but also still be able to introduce to, for me at least, this this newer character that I don't know a whole lot about. And they do, again, take some liberties with his character as well. They bring in his mother as being a key point to... Uh, part of the story and she kind of delves into the area of witchcraft because she cares about her son. She wants to protect her son. She also wants to help her son be able to attain the goals that he wants in life. But all the things that again are added are still very relevant to the time period that this film is taking place in. And so again, it's also going to play on a fantasy. And so bringing in these other fantasy elements, I think does work well. Nothing seems dramatically out of place. 
in this movie. As far as some of the other objective elements of this film, I think that when it comes to the writing, I would say the writing for the most part is actually pretty strong. I really do like the way in which the scenes go from one to the other. I like the consistent storyline thread, right, about how Sir Gawain meets the Green Knight and then cuts off his head and then he has to wait a year and then the Green Knight says this is a part of his game and the, the Green Knight's going to have to repay or whoever wants to fight him, uh, whatever blow they land on him, he will repay to that person in a year time and so it's just a very interesting commentary on uh, what it means to have honor, what it means to to want and seek glory, and also like the consequences and the prices of these things um, and how it doesn't always come out and turn out the way that that it would seem. And how it's not always as simple as just cutting someone down. Sometimes there's a, a little bit more complication to it than just that. So I, I like that basic element of, of the story as it, as it was playing out on screen. Also, I think that the editing to the film worked really well and really worked in the favor of the story. I thought that all the cuts worked very well. It didn't seem like a very long film. Uh, it wasn't cut crazy like in more recent action films, for instance. And this film is not really an action film. It is definitely a slow burn drama that does have some really awesome, creepy uh, elements to it. Also, the fact that this film and it's now been officially released that this film was made for $15 million on a budget of $15 million, and yet they were able to produce some really cool visual effects was really awesome. That being said, even though the visual effects were pretty cool, especially when it came to the environmental so shots, and uh, most especially with the Green Knight character itself, like Green Knight character looked fantastic. There is also some bad CGI in the movie. There is the, the this featuring of a fox uh, throughout parts of the movie. And even from the trailer, you could tell, oh boy, they're doing a CGI fox and it just doesn't look very good. And I can say that seeing it on the big screen, the, the fox does not look good either. So again, the CGI, there's a lot of really good stuff, but then there's also some stuff that does not really hold up nearly as well. Uh, the music and the score of this movie probably is one of the best parts of it, kind of up there with the cinematography. I think that both of them just work so well. They feel like they were completely made for this movie, for this role, and they're, they're just both fantastic. The score is just so, again, ethereal, and it really just adds to the drama. It adds to kind of almost a thriller element of the story as well, um, and it kind of keep, keeps you on the edge of your seat at moments, and I thought that the music really added to that. Um, also, the cinematography does that as well. There's really one really beautiful shot, especially where you actually are following um, Sir Gawain. You're actually following Dev Patel's character and he's on his horse riding out of town. And it's a long, like two or three minute shot where it's just, you know, not breaking away from him, just panning back, following him on his horse. And even though it's just so simple and there's kids running behind him, those are the kinds of shots that sometimes it can take a long time to get right because not only do you have other actors on screen, but you don't know if something's going to fly in uh, or make a noise or do something that's going to mess up the shot completely. You know, and obviously he's riding an actual horse. And so what if the horse gets freaked out? I mean, there's so many things that could happen uh, when you have all these other factors going on. And so the fact that you have the cinematographer who's willing to take risks like that and do these really cool shots um, like that and others in the movie was actually really cool to see as well. Uh, again, as far as things that I don't like about the movie, I think that there's certain elements of the story that are just a little bit bizarre for me. There's a point when he finds this castle, for instance, and there's a lot of these like fantasy elements going on. There's a woman there who looks just like the woman that he might be in love with back home, uh, which again, I was like, okay, Alicia Vikander is in two locations. I don't know exactly what the, the mindset here is going to be and then there's this really weird scene that to, for me was just not necessary at all especially when you look into the fact that in the original tale there is this element of the woman in the castle trying to seduce him and that is an element that's obviously at play in the movie as well but then it actually succeeds like he actually gives in to her seduction but not in the way that you would suspect and in order to get this this green charmed uh you know waist uh you know amulet thing in order to you know to get that back to protect him from being killed by the green knight and, and the way that it plays out, it's just very weird. There's stuff that I don't even want to mention because it's really gross. <laughs> it's just like, let's just say that human fluids are involved and you're just like, ooh, what the hell? It's just, and that's one of the parts of the movie. And there's a couple of parts in the film where, where like something like that happens or just something uncomfortable happens where I'm like, that's just not necessary. That doesn't add anything really to the story at all. And and to me, it's just, and it's just a filmmaker's way of trying to be weird for the sake of being weird. So it has that too. And, and that's the reason why for this movie, it's been so hard for me to sit down and actually review it because there's there's so many parts that I love. I, again, there's elements of this story that made me so excited that I went out of my way to learn more about the story, to learn more about the history of the story, to, to get the audiobook of the uh, Tolkien uh, translation of the story and, and so many other ways of just looking further into it. 
And then and and there's parts of this where I'm like, I, I want to buy this on 4K once it comes out because I want to see the special features. I want to be able to see how they were able to do some of these shots. I want to see see the, the behind the scenes and and the way in which the, the story was being played out. And even watching the director's commentary because there is this almost art house element to the movie, though it's not. I can say clearly not an art house film. Uh, don't worry, you're not going to get a, like a David Lynch weird, you know, <laughs> nonsensical story. Uh, it is, you know, very linear at times, and I think it, it's very, very good. But it's definitely an indie film. You know, it's an indie feeling film. It's not this high action octane film. It's a slow burn indie, and I, I, I really like those elements of it, and I want to learn more about it for that very reason. But then there's again these these scenes that happen, especially this weird, you know, sexual scene that happens uh, between Dev Patel and um, Alicia Vikander's character as this woman in the castle and it was just very unsettling but not in the way where you're like oh I'm unsettled and that's a good job that the director did it's like no that's just something that you don't need and it's just unnecessary and it's just weird but yeah that's all I really can really say about it but overall I did enjoy this movie a lot. As I said, there's parts that I love, and I do plan on buying this film when it comes out on Blu-ray and on 4K, and it is one of those rare gems in Hollywood, I think, coming out today where it's dealing with a very large story. It's dealing with a very large, uh, typically what would be a large $100 plus million budget action movie, and saying, no, we can actually make this story for $15 million, have mostly you know, solid effects and still be able to tell a really compelling story. This is definitely not a movie that's going to be for everyone. There's going to be people that hate this movie because, again, it's a slow burn indie movie with some weird sequences, as I mentioned before. But I think there's a lot of stuff in here that any fans of actual film and the filmmaking process will actually thoroughly enjoy. And again, so much so that I do plan on buying this on physical media. I think this is one of those films that is going to age better with, you know, with t age, age really well with time. I mean, this is a movie that the more I think about it, the more that I love it. But then also the, the parts that I hate, the more I hate those parts, too. It's just, again, it's this very weird uh, internal process for me. So I'm overall, I'm going to give this film a solid B. Um, and I, I've always been kind of between like giving a B minus, giving a B plus, falling into the A range and like different times. I feel different ways. But there's just so many really awesome things in this movie from an objective level. Um, even the opening sequence, there's this great shot where it just stays on this location. There's a fire in the background and there's something going on up in front. And then the camera just fades back and then all of a sudden the music comes in you're like oh okay and it's just really good so it's not for everybody you might hate it but those are my honest thoughts about the green knight have you seen the green knight or are you planning to see the green knight let me know in the comment section below if you like this video smash that like button light up that fire button if you're watching over an odyssey you're all amazing and beautiful people hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and as always god bless and now for a huge shout out to all of my August locals, Patreon, and subscribe star members. Starting off with my locals crew, Cat's App, The Real It, D Sharp, Biffer the Hobbit, Robert Barnes, and Goblin Squatch. Thank you all very much for supporting me over on Locals. And now on to my Patreon members, Andrew Hoyle, Brian P, Christopher Bowman, Dion, Don Bruno de la Mancha. Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father. Father Damien Cook, Garrett Searles, Harold Francis, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Lance, Laura, the Modern Major General's Story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mondo Spieler, Mr. Peabody, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Allen, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Tina B, the Empress of the Universe. Thank you very much for supporting me over on Patreon. And lastly, to my subscribe star peeps, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, John B, Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, slash the new number two, J-Rod the Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Subscribe Star, and to everyone for supporting me on these platforms. Also, a shout out to all of my YouTube members. You get shouted out at the end of every single live stream. And if you want to have your name shouted out at the end of every live stream and every video, please check out my locals, Patreon, subscribe star. Uh, and you can go ahead and find those links in the top link of this description. You can find it's called the Willow link. And it'll have a list to literally all of the social media platforms and all the different ways that you can support the channel. If you join at the $1 level, you can actually get your name shouted out at the end of every single video and live stream. $5 level, gives you that plus you get access to exclusive giveaways of 4k titles right now i've got tons of 4k steelbooks to give away this month including for top gun i also have a quiet place part two 
I have Snatch on 4K, the John Wick Trilogy on 4K, and also I have a Sicario 4K disc as well, and a bunch of others that are going to be coming in this month too. So if you want to have access to any of those types of exclusive giveaways, join at the Army of Asgard level. At the $10 level, the Keeper of the Bifrost level, you get all of that, plus you get access to exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, including instant reactions when I go to see movies. I do quick little filmings of myself and talk about the films that I have seen and my instant reactions to that. You also get access to an exclusive podcast that I do with John John the Flick Pick Flickinger once or twice a month, and you get to also ask us any question that you want. We put a Q&A post up, and you get to ask us what whatever it is that you want to ask. So, again, if that sounds cool to you, Keeper of the Bifrost level. And lastly, there is the Chosen of Valhalla level, where you get all that stuff. Plus, in your first month as a Chosen of Valhalla member, you get a free t-shirt. Your choice. Ship it anywhere in the world. And also, you get to once a month be featured on the OMB Reviews channel, and you get to... Talk with me. We usually chill out for three to four hours, and I like ask everyone what they've been watching, what they want to talk about, what they want to promote, and it's always a really good time. And so if that sounds interesting to you, please consider joining. Uh, that is going to be on Subscribestar and on Patreon only, as Locals is just the keeper of the Bifrost level. But anyway, thank you all very much for your time, for your support, and for listening to this shout-out video. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.